Um, and this is this is kind of uh, an, an article from earlier this year, but just this whole discussion that we're having today was um, just kind of, I think, making it relevant again. Um, basically, there was a press conference where um, Jason Kenney in March uh, had just said that, no, Alberta won't be raising our minimum wage. You know, he was asked this because BC was raising their, their minimum wage. So um, he was asked, is Alberta going to be raising our minimum wage as well? And uh, he basically just said no. And um, he goes on to further explain uh, the tens of thousands of jobs that were lost during the last recession, um, again, the, the oil recession in 2015, 2016 that we were just talking about, um, those thousands of jobs were lost because employers couldn't afford a 50% increase in wage costs. And now that Alberta has done away with the vast majority of its COVID-19 public health measures, it's not the time for an uptick in minimum wage. Many of those minimum wage jobs are in that service sector where you have struggling small businesses that have been absolutely devastated through COVID. Many of them are financially flat on their back. They got deeply encumbered in debt just to keep the doors open. Only now are things fully opening for them to get their business back to normal levels. So I think adding yet another major increase on minimum wage would probably be the end of many of these small hospitality businesses that bravely survived the pandemic. And um, of course, this is just yet another reflection of how the government and like those in power just really align themselves with corporate interests above the interests of workers. But um, I think this is also just a really good example here of how the idea of the small guy or like Kenny says here, small hospitality businesses that barely survive the pandemic, like uh, <laughs> as someone reading this, like our, our emotional attachment and empathy for that kind of person or that kind of business is used in order to drive support for really the big corporations, the ones that are having record pro that had record profits throughout the pandemic and probably laid off a lot of people anyway, and uh, where an increase in the minimum wage would actually make a considerable difference in the society here. Yeah, no, it's 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 pretty incredible to watch that happen because, like, I just think to myself, or even for any listener, it's like, how many people do you actually know who work in these like mythical, you know, mom and pop or small business small businesses that are being described here by Jason Kenny? And yeah, the truth is, is that most people really don't work in these situations, and the labor market is is dominated by large mar multinationals who guard their revenues at any um at any cost essentially so so yeah but the narrative is still driven towards um this more sympathetic view of business because um saying that you're you're not raising minimum wage because you want to protect walmart um it doesn't really necessarily go well in terms of public image but i think that's essentially what's happening here if anything it also plays into um this myth that I think is is very useful in capitalism that everyone can become this kind of, I guess, like small business entrepreneur and, you know, generate um, oh, the significance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the American dream type where we're all just a few good decisions away from owning our own business empire or, you know, pa making passive income, you know, buying property, doing all these things that you're essentially told are completely available to you as long as you make the right decisions and, and will uh, noble, lead you yeah, yeah and, and are noble and respectable and you know fit within all these different image um boxes um so as long as you do these things you will ascend up the ladders and you will become this you know mythical small business owner who needs to be protected by the government when in reality um yeah, a lot of wealth that gets created in these situations, when it even does get created, is essentially handed down by families um, in this kind of continuous way, but also ignores the fact that, yeah, 99.9% .9 of people will, will never 
will never reach those heights, no matter how much they try or no matter how much they do, because fundamentally the system is built on scarcity. If we could all become what they say we could become, um, the system wouldn't be possible, it wouldn't function, because it requires a large portion of us to to really be um, workers, workers in the sense that um, you know, you're exploited and your your value is is basically funneled to the top. So yeah, I think I think that's something I thought of for yeah. sure is like how it it plays into that too. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, a lot of people do do buy into that and and bank their hopes and dreams on on maybe one day becoming um, one of the ruling elite or yeah. yeah, well, not even the ruling elite, I guess, but yeah, that idea of like you own your own business and you have freedom and it's a noble cause and you're contributing to society and we need to protect that because that is at the core of the like. Yeah, American dream or Canadian dream or whatever. Um, I think the the irony here as well is that in in aligning our government or our society's priorities with um, capitalistic incentives and with the priorities of really big businesses, we're also contributing to uh, to driving out those small businesses, right? Mm, and yeah. to like these these small businesses, right? Like a lot of them you know, probably do pay their workers well already or have a very small staff or are just family run and um, trying to get by like that. And, you know, it is tough, but a large reason that uh, that it is tough is because a very large company can come in with economies of scale and because the minimum wage is much lower than the, the cost of living, they don't have to pay their their workers very much and so are able to just compete are are able to compete in the marketplace at a way lower cost and then they take customers and business away from those small businesses so yeah that's definitely i don't know definitely a point of uh irony here as well Mm -hmm. and i think um just because we were talking about in the last episode the uh the school shooting in um texas i don't know if you (laughs) did you See, like, uh, the thing where Matthew McConaughey, like, went to the White House? Oh, yeah, yeah, I definitely saw that. Yeah, so Mm -hmm. actually, I think, uh, I think he got a lot of, um, like, praise from, you know, people kind of across the spectrum, but I think it's because of how he outlined the, the whole kind of responsible gun owner debate, right? And I think there's a lot of parallels here because, you know, in this case, Jason Kenney uses the idea of, the little guy, the the small business, kind of in order to distract from the issue of minimum wage. And I think what typically happens um, in discussions about uh, gun regulation is that the idea of the responsible gun owner is used um, to distract from the issue of uh, gun regulation. What is typically said is like oh well if you introduce you know these background checks or if you um, are introducing these restrictions on weapons then that's really just going to harm the responsible uh, gun owners who didn't do anything wrong and the way that Matthew McConaughey laid it out in this speech is that like as a responsible gun owner or speaking for the responsible gun owner community it's unjust or unfair that people can go and commit these terrible acts of violence when we're all out here trying to do our best to be responsible, right? It's like, what's the point of trying to be responsible if the uh, regulation or lack of regulation is still allowing for these atrocities to happen? And so I think, again, trying to draw a parallel to this situation here, I think just probably a more productive way to think about it um, is like, why are we letting these big businesses get away with um, not paying their workers fairly while taking record profits? Uh, Why are we allowing them to do that? Obviously through through many means, but by uh, one way that we're allowing them to do that is by keeping the minimum wage really low. Why are we letting them get away with that when small businesses are are doing their best to survive but are are still struggling and are kind of beholden to these rules and um you know in a lot of cases uh trying to provide 
for their own workers.